am Amy Myers Jaffe, and I'm Executive Director for Energy and Sustainability at University of California, Davis. And I'm a Senior Advisor to the University of California's Office of the Chief Investment Officer. Uh, I spoke today at GARP 2017 um, about the risk facing the oil market. The oil market is, uh, we have speculators uh, feeling positive about oil these days. Um, there's a lot of length in the market. Um, but structurally, um, there's some questions about sort of the long-term future of oil. In the old days, one could come up and you know, make a talk, and we could talk about where we are in the business cycle and the boom and bust cycle in the oil industry and combine that with sort of a geopolitical overlay. And that pretty much gave you the whole picture. Oftentimes, the geopolitical taking precedence over everything. But in today's world, we have to focus on technology as a third pillar um, that influences the price of oil. And that's more of a long-term structural influence. And, it, and that influence comes together in, with oil in multiple ways. So the first one is that the oil industry and then everybody who, who invests in oil or uh, speculates on the futures price in oil had to think about depletion, right? We were drilling for oil. We're using a lot of oil. China's using a lot of oil. Um, oil demand seems to be rising. And we're using up these scarce resources that we have, especially in places like the United States and Canada and the UK and so forth. And there was even discussion that maybe Canada would run out of natural gas and have to import it from someplace else. Uh, then what happens is, through technology, we figure out a way to produce oil and gas not only from reservoirs that we find in the ocean and, and so forth, but um, actually we can produce the tiny particles of oil and gas that are trapped in what we call source rock. So, and, and that's the shale was, of course, most popular in the United States that we've heard of. But ultimately, it's a technology shift, which is that I'm able to produce oil and gas from any place that there's source rock eventually, uh, certainly now with shale. And that means that depletion is now delayed for decades, right? Depletion is not a driving force in the market. And so the premise that reserves are going to appreciate, and so therefore I should, if I have expensive reserves, say in the Canadian oil sands or in the Arctic, I can just warehouse them to a later decade when they're going to be uh, able to be produced profitably. Um, that whole premise now is a lot more uncertain about when that time would be. Um, and then that gets to the second piece of uncertainty, which is about demand. It was, it's been assumed for decades that oil demand was just going to keep rising, 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 and it would never plateau. But when we again look across the technology space, there's so many innovative technologies coming to the fore whether it's simply big data analytics, which allows uh, freight companies to reduce the amount of energy they need to make deliveries because they're optimized um, for routing, or whether it's something um, more like advanced vehicles, where um, I'm going to have a self-driving car that's going to make it easier for me to go electric because the car can take itself to be charged and then come back for me, um, or on-demand mobility, where I don't even have to own a car because I'm just going to hit a button on my phone and then a car is going to pick me up. And, and the question is, are all those technologies going to eliminate demand for oil or are they going to increase demand for oil? And it's not 100% clear yet um, what the applications are going to mean. So the interesting thing about that is, again, that creates an uncertainty because there is this possibility that oil demand now is going to go down. You know, maybe not next year or the year after, but you know, maybe in the next decade or two. And so that, again, changes the idea about whether warehousing this expensive oil and gas in the Arctic or you know, in, in you know, the very many reserves, Saudi Arabia's 100 years worth of reserves, you know, are they all going to be able to be produced? So that changes the long-term view. Because I have uncertainty when I didn't have uncertainty before, there isn't this uplift to the current price of oil that comes from the perception that it'll definitely be high in the future. And whether, the, whether that future is a couple years or you know, decades, we're just taking that 
premise completely out of the market. And that is causing structural change. And it's causing change in behavior. So right now, um, because we don't trade oil to 2040, we don't really know what everybody in the market thinks, right? You know, you can go to the derivatives market and buy an option for 10 years from now, and it'll basically be priced roughly the same as oil's price today because we're not a very imaginative industry, and we always think that whatever the price is today is what the price is going to be long term. Um, the, the, the issue is, though, that Saudi Arabia has decided to do an IPO for 5% of their national oil company, and if they do that as a public offering, then the market will have to assess a lot of things, you know, obviously geopolitical risk, but beyond that, the market will have to decide what do they think Saudi reserves and the massive Saudi refining system is worth? And taking that into account means that you have to make your own assessment. What do you think the long-term price of oil will be? Whether you think, you know, if, if Saudi Arabia has 200 plus billion barrels of oil, what percentage of those do you think could be produced? Because when you're going to value them, should you value every single barrel? Or do you think 25% of it will never be produced? What if you think 50% of it will never be produced? So the dangerous element here to the Saudi IPO is that if it fails to get the price that um, people have in their minds about what the value of Saudi Aramco is, um, it could have a cascading effect on people's pessimism about the long-term future for oil uh, globally. And, and all of that you know, winds up getting priced into uh, the commodity. So that's sort of where we are today um, in the oil world at a very uncertain time. Matches some of the uncertainty people have about trade policy and, and currencies. Um, oil is, uh, is, is, is just as uncertain as everything else.